All right, well, uh, it's time to check in and give you a report of what's really going on here in Maui. Um, I'm at the King's Cathedral Shelter, where all day, every day, for several days, one vehicle after another vehicle after another vehicle shows up and unloads truckloads of assistance. None of this is coming from county, federal, or state who is all, who are all coordinated and working together and making uh, a better future for a lot of people. Um, so uh, that's good, but what's even just so astounding is all of these, I mean, there's so much stuff in there. The us refugees could never consume it all. There's so much they're able to ship truckloads over to the other side. And uh, and up till, I don't know, 12 hours ago, it seemed like, um, it seemed like just uh, so many good things were happening after the tragedy. So many people coming together, working together, doing the right, doing the right thing for each other. And then we started getting crazy news. Um, and, 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 the, and the national news is not telling you what's really going on. Like I have heard that they've got 400 body bags already full and they've ordered 400 more, right? I don't know what truth there is to that, but these are all coming from people who are talking to first responders, paramedics, firemen, telling their friends this is what's really going on. So um, that's gnarly, right? That's you're not hearing that in the news. And then there's been looting and people holding up supplies at gunpoint. Like, what kind of freaking low life piece of crap would hold up a truckload of water and blankets and pillows that are going to the other side to help people who've been freaking burned out of their house I mean my god and and my sentiment is so heavily shared anyone who hears this news is so pissed and so protective they want to go defend Napili and whatever anyway uh, so that is not what I wanted to tell you um, and I hope they root those guys out, find them, and throw the book at them. Um, God, that is disheartening. My kids are up there, you know, and I, I met a girl who got mugged by three males in Napili. I mean, that's just unheard of. So, yeah, and then, of course, the air over there is just a toxic burn pit, and I really am not in a hurry to get over there, um. But on a positive note, I um, I have experienced one miracle after another miracle after another after another. <laughs> I mean, as um, soon as I escaped the other side and got over here on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m., you know, first I get, try to buy a cup of coffee. They don't. They won't let me pay for it. I. The lady behind me insists on buying my breakfast. I go outside and make a phone call. Someone puts a freaking uh, gift card from the place on my on my stuff anonymously. I go outside. The uh, a, sh a tourist says, hey, "I'm leaving. Can I give you all these this food we we're gonna we don't need anymore?" So I take the, <laughs> all this guy's supplies. Then uh, I realize, oh, that four hundred dollars I've paid for three years at Planet Fitness finally gonna come in handy I got a ten dollar membership never used it now I got a hot shower Woo! that was great and uh, and then I, I, I camp in my car in the parking lot of Planet Fitness first thing in the morning I hear on the radio 200 yards away from me is King's Cathedral opening a shelter so I got to go all of 200 yards to here where there was great free coffee to start my day on Wednesday and or that was then Thursday morning I think it's getting all jumbled yeah so so and then it hasn't stopped there uh, 
a friend from 15 years ago uh, says uh, what's your Venmo name or whatever and so I went and got one and put it there never asked anybody for help I don't necessarily need it in any way as much as everybody else uh, I have my car I have a couple of my things so much more than so many um, and I'd been saving to take a trip on the mainland which I'm going to take and maybe I'll be visiting you um, uh, but uh, but yeah it's just been incredible so so then I come here and this place is so so well supplied. I mean, people just there's seven meals a day here. I'm getting fat. I mean, it's the, the outpouring from the community has been so incredible. Um, so anyway, so so I, I I put that in in the little response and uh, two other people that I haven't seen since high school sent me money. I mean, I haven't seen these people in. I mean, maybe I saw them at a reunion once or twice in the last 40 years, but um, holy smokes. I mean, thank you um, uh, to the couple people who sent me money. I mean, what a, I go into Venmo, it's like, do you want to transfer this balance? I'm like, what? Holy shit. Anyway, I now know how Venmo works. Uh, so, and then, uh, you know, uh, the governor comes on and says, 2,000 rooms we're going to work for, for you guys. And I happen to work at a restaurant that's uh, not a Marriott restaurant. It's in the Westin. It's not owned by the Westin, but it's in that building. And where I work, that building, the Westin, has offered to take in anyone displaced who works at White Coco, where I work, as a breakfast waiter. So I'm going to be able to ultimately, when it gets a little safer and I can get over there, and people aren't being held up at gunpoint and the air isn't a toxic burn pit pile of dust, I'm going to be able to move into a hotel right above where I work. And I still have a job. Another thing I'm thankful for, and many others have lost. And so, yeah. Um, I tell my kids I have this propensity for luck and I told my kids don't worry about me a bunch of good fortune is going to come my way it always does when I really need it and by golly someone's looking out for me I don't know if that's my ancestors I like to talk about I swear I think if you talk about your ancestors they're going to hook you up with some good luck because they recognize you down here somehow or something I don't know <laughs> anyway um, yeah uh Oh, and this is great. This is fascinating. Um, a buddy of mine, I had no idea what kind of ordeal uh, an old good friend of mine, Spud, was going through. But holy crap, Spud lived right along that wall where people jumped out of their cars and jumped in the ocean. And he was with those people, 80 of them, in the water for four hours. <clears throat> wow, just incredible amounts of fire and and smoke, you know, rolled over that wall for hours uh, with people with their children, elderly people, people with their pets, dogs, cats. I mean, uh, harrowing, 80 people, 80 people hun huddled under that wall. A Coast Guard cutter comes out sends two guys in with with stand-up paddles and says we're gonna take two out at a time <laughs> and he's like that's not gonna do us any good there's 80 of us here <laughs> and so then thankfully the Maui fire department pulled up in um, their f1 250 trucks or whatever they are and piled 12 in at a time in the back of the pickup truck and drove them up to Napoleon and rescued them but but um you know, you hear, they rescued 14 people from the water. Yeah, well, there were 100 people out there, and they, <laughs> and they rescued like 10% of them. So not to put the Coast Guard down. Thank you, Coast Guard, for all you do. But um, it just wasn't the, wasn't, wasn't the right remedy, I guess. And so 
hearing his story was uh, harrowing, heart-wrenching. Um, he lost everything. His vehicle, his every possession he owns. Um, and so I was just so happy. He, he finally made it over here to the other side. I uh, met him at Costco where some other friends were going to pick him up and take him to comfort. <clears throat> but I was able to get him, bring him over here to the King's Cathedral where they set him up with a, a backpack, a baseball cap, a new pair of slippers, some clothes. And hopefully I'll come back tomorrow and get more because they've got it and it's here for him. That's why that stuff's getting dropped off. For guys like Spud, who suffered in the water for four hours watching Lahaina burn. Um, so anyway, uh, sorry if this isn't a very attractive video. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably it's probably not sensitive to joke about it, but. There's a few slightly funny things from all this, like, you know, I needed to clean up my apartment. Now it's taken care of. <laughs> uh, don't got to pay rent this month. <laughs> rent just went down a lot. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, the big story here, though, is the kindness, the generous, generosity, the love, the fact that this church makes Christianity look good. First time I've seen Christianity look good in, I don't know, almost 10 years. All these freaking hate monger Christians in the South hating everything and everybody. <laughs> they, they make religion look terrible. I, I thought I had turned my back forever on religion. And now I'm seeing it done by people who are have, have love in their hearts and they like to take care of each other and they're just all good. All good. So... That's cool, uh, you know. You just don't see positive representations in very many religious organizations these days. And by golly, this is a rock solid one right here. Anyways, um, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for for being interested, and thanks for caring. Um, the people of Lahaina appreciate it. They they need it. Aloha.